Now the crypto market is recovering and we have basically to sit down, start learning about Ethereum and their rollups, their layer twos, their scaling options, because these are gonna be talking points as we get closer to the merge. And I think it's very important as miners that you're up to date on proof of work versus proof of stake, what Ethereum is doing and how they're implementing it. So when you run into the conversations surrounding the merge and proof of stake being needed for scalability, you can express that, well, actually scalability is being done primarily by these third parties like Polygon, et cetera. And you need to understand what the difference between ZK rollups are and all of that sort of stuff, right? So I want to just cover this. This is going to be a little long, but Ethereum's rollup race, what is a true ZK EVM? The ZK rollup race between Ethereum Layer 2 Scroll, Polygon, and Matter Labs may come down to definitions. Last week, a trio of announcements from Scroll, Matter Labs, and Polygon all had something in common. Each company implied it would be the first to bring a ZK EVM to market. ZK EVMs are a type of zero knowledge rollup, a layer two network that runs atop Ethereum to process transactions, bundle them up, and pass them back down to Ethereum's layer one mainnet. ZK rollups use fancy cryptography to take some of the load off of Ethereum's highly trafficked layer one network. As a result, they promise to offer users cheaper transactions along with a host of other benefits. ZK EVMs all aspire to the same goal, creating a ZK rollup experience that feels exactly like using Ethereum's layer one blockchain. This means developers should be able to port over their existing smart contracts without changing their code and without abandoning the EVM, Ethereum virtual machine tools, that uh, they are accustomed to using. The EVM, rather than being one specific piece of hardware or software, is better understood as an amalgam of rules standards and software packages. When shared across different computers running similar software, this shared set of standards coalesces into a network. Ethereum is one such network, although plenty of other blockchain networks have adopted versions of EVM as well. But how can, all, uh, how can three companies all claim to be the first to create a ZK EVM? The answer comes down to how they define what it means to create a true ZK EVM. We won't explain all of the different types of rollups in this article. For more on that, including the difference between optimistic rollups and the more advanced ZK rollups discussed here, you can read last week's edition of Valid Points and CoinDesk Layer 2 Explainer. Optimi uh, optimistic like rollups is optimism and arbitrum, for example. Until now, zero knowledge rollups have only been applied to a handful of use cases, like sending tokens between addresses or trading NFTs. ZK EVMs, zero knowledge rollups that aim to support any Ethereum smart contract, were expected to be years away until just recently. Compared to quicker to market optimistic rollups, general purpose ZK EVMs offer a number of security and user experience benefits. In the future, they are expected to take over from Ethereum's mainnet as the primary hub for Ethereum activity in the years to come. As for why three teams all seem to think they have the first ZK EVM, it might be the case that they were genuinely unaware that their competitors were moving at a similar pace. When Matter Lab said it would be the first ZK EVM to market in the first quarter of 2023, perhaps it didn't realize Polygon was en route to launch its own ZK EVM as soon as this summer. And maybe Polygon, when it announced that it would be the first ZK EVM to market, didn't realize that ZK Sync was, apparently, prepped to launch on Ethereum's mainnet by the end of the year, ahead of Poly, uh, Polygon's supposed plan to launch in early of 2023. Timelines in crypto land are notoriously unreliable, and roadmaps from Scroll, Matter Labs, and Polygon should be taken with a grain of salt. But timelines aren't the only reason why Scroll, Matter Labs, and Polygon all claim they will be the first ZK EVM to market. Part of the disagreement comes down to how they define what makes a true ZK EVM. 
Polygon faced criticism last week when it announced that it would be launching the first EVM equivalent ZK rollup to market. According to some onlookers, Polygon's solution would be better described as EVM compatible, not EVM equivalent. So what is the difference between compatibility and equivalence? The two leading optimistic rollups for Ethereum, Arbitrum, and Optimism boast that they are EVM equivalent. This means that they uh, that the experience of developing on Arbitrum and Optimism is 100% identical to the experience of developing on Ethereum. Developers have access to all of the same tools and frameworks that they use to develop on Ethereum mainnet, and they won't need to worry about their layer one contracts breaking if they are directly ported over to a layer two chain. EVM equivalence is a massive deal to developers since it means far less overhead when migrating from layer one to layer two. Users too see benefits of EVM equivalence. Rather than juggling roll-up specific wallets or other tools, users of EVM equivalent chains such as Optimism and Arbitrum won't need to abandon familiar apps like MetaMask, and that is very important. EVM compatibility is a loser definition in, uh, uh, as a looser, <laughs> loser, <laughs> it's a loser. We don't want compatibility, we want equivalence. You loser compatibility. EVM compatibility is a looser definition than EVM equivalence. Rather than the developer and user experiences being exactly identical to that of Ethereum, EVM compatible chains might not plug into all of the same tools and software frameworks that are used on Ethereum. Developers might need to rewrite their smart contracts in order to port them over to an EVM compatible blockchain sometimes in a completely different programming language than Ethereum's native langu language, Solidity. Even if developers are still able to write their smart contracts using Solidity, certain operations might not be fully supported by the rollup, which can lead to bugs or other engineering headaches. Although users might be able to send assets back and forth between the EVM compatible rollup and Ethereum, doing so might require a specialized wallet rather than MetaMask. When Polygon announced that it would be bringing the first EVM equivalent ZK EVM to market last week, some onlookers pointed out that the specifications provided by Polygon would be better described as EVM compatible, not EVM equivalent. In June, a, a, a Twitter thread scrolls Lu, uh, Lao Tzu Zhang, something like that, Lu, Lao Tzu Zhang, Describe three different types of ZK EVMs, bytecode level, language level, and consensus level. All of the applications announced last week fall into the first two categories. ZK Sync 2.0 falls into the language level bucket. Developers can write smart contracts in Solidity, but ZK Sync will transpile that code into another language called Yule behind the scenes, which it then interprets in, uh, in order to do all of the fancy cryptography that powers the zero knowledge rollup under the hood. On the plus side, Matter Labs, the team behind ZK Sync, says that its system was engineered to provide the rollup certain advantages, particularly around how it generates computation intensive cryptographic proofs. On the negative end, ZK Sync, by most definitions, would be better described as EVM compatible rather than EVM equivalent. There's a chance that ZK Sync won't be one to one compatible with every single Ethereum tool out there, though Matter Labs insists that this shouldn't be an issue in the long term. Scroll and Polygon are both taking a bytecode level approach to their ZK EVMs. These approaches rip out the transpiler step completely, meaning they don't convert Solidity code into a separate language before it gets compiled and interpreted. This means better compatibility with the EVM. But even here, there are distinctions that may make Scroll more of a true ZK EVM than Polygon depending upon who you ask. As Masari explained in a report released last week, part of the debate follows whether the EVM bytecode is being executed directly or interpreted first and then executed. In other words, if a solution does not mirror official EVM specs, it cannot be considered a true ZK EVM. Within this definition, scroll might be considered a true ZK EVM versus others. According to Masari, Polygon uses a new set of assembly codes to express each opcode. The human readable translation of bytecode, which could allow the behavior of the code to be different of uh, a, to be different on the EVM. 
Last week's ZK EVM announcements represent impressive advances in technology, but as crypto has proven time and time again, even highly technical concepts are not immune to marketing distortions. At the end of the day, though, slight technical distinctions, like the difference between EVM equivalence and compatibility, exists on a poorly defined spectrum. It's also important to point out that, like, scroll could be better, right? But Polygon is once again, like, has that huge first mover advantage and has so much adoption. Honestly, too, Polygon has a ton of adoption because of miners. That's another thing to point out is like the reason why Polygon has a ton of adoption is because Ethermine picked it up very, very early on to enable low fee payouts to miners. And when you have a system that is like first to move, and it is, you know, highly invested in and is also supporting the ecosystem from the consensus level all the way through, you end up with something that is close to that too big to fail. So whether or not scroll is actually better, it's still hard to actually fight through that, that kind of first mover advantage, right? Um, as Scroll co-founder Sandy Pang told Coindesk, there isn't a clear consensus on any definitions. Scroll's whole research team tends to gravitate towards a certain narrative or certain view on things, but it's by no means a definitive thing. There isn't a consensus within our research team on what everything means. What's even less clear and probably less important is who can rightfully claim to be the first ZK EVM. First is a very ph philosophical concept paying explained. Whether you measure first being the first to announce or the first to start or the first to achieve mainnet. It's the first to achieve mainnet, duh. <laughs> it could be a couple of months or years to iron out all the kinks and debug. In the long term, it seems like they are all uh, that all of the ZK EVM solutions announced last week, along with several others we haven't even heard about, will coalesce around new technologies and roll-up solutions that make Ethereum vastly more accessible than it is today. The competition around timelines and definitions is just a sideshow. And, I mean, it is also important because what we've seen is obviously in the all core dev calls from Ethereum, they've kind of started abandoning sharding, which is the scalability solution. Now there is something that is way off in the distant future called dank sharding, but they are putting that on hold in favor of letting these third parties have the ZK rollups. They've, they've talked about this before using rollups, using rollups, and they're taking the rollup concept and putting that into the sharding concept with dank sharding. We've covered this before, but that's way down the line. So these projects are going to be extremely relevant still once post-merge, right? Because we aren't really seeing a true Ethereum 2.0. We aren't seeing, seeing scalability solved. So you will see a lot of the same issues with scaling on Ethereum post-merge and having these alternatives, you know, these layer two solutions will be important. Now it does obviously you know, pose more risk at the end of the day for security, because as we've seen, some of these layer two solutions do end up having, creating security holes and affecting end users at the end of the day. And with them releasing more and more new stuff, that is just going to be part of the nature of the game. Like I said before though, too, if you're really looking at this from like a third party view and what you should invest in, what you shouldn't, at least like from my humble opinion, not financial advice. If I was purely technological, I think scroll sounds the best, but if I'm being honest, I think Polygon is going to maintain kind of that market lead when it comes up to, to uh, or comes to essentially scaling. That doesn't mean though that we shouldn't keep an eye on optimism at this point because those optimistic rollups do seem pretty, uh, pretty competitive. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.